Hi everyone, Kofi here and welcome back to the channel, Tutor Med, where everything medicine is simplified. This is the second video in the exam-oriented learning series. In the first episode, we looked at the approach to learning effectively for the MCQs. In this video, we will look at how to approach the theory or written clinical cases using a question from GMDC exam 2022, the internal medicine section. Alright, let's get started. And so for the theoretical clinical cases, these are usually short clinical case scenarios with some relevant information and they are followed by about five short questions and it's expected of us to give short and concise responses. Just like the MCQs, the approach here is past questions, past questions. So we get the past questions and then compile them, group them into the various sub-disciplines. And so for medicine, we have cardiology, pulmonology, gastroenterology, hepatobiliary, neurology, genitourinary, rheumatology, endocrinology, etc. And then for surgery, you have general surgery, cardiothoracic surgery, urology, trauma and orthopedics, neurosurgery, pediatric surgery. Now, this compilation helps you know the trend of the questions. It helps you identify very high yield topics because as you compile them, you realize that maybe for internal medicine, cardiology features almost every time. And so I need to pay attention to that first for my section B. And even for that particular sub-discipline, you may know that certain questions, like maybe heart failure and ischemic heart diseases, features. And so you may need to pay more attention to them than the topics which are in the same sub-discipline like maybe valvular heart diseases. Or sometimes, it can help you predict questions which are unlikely to be asked for that year. For example, if for cardiology, heart failure has been asked for three consecutive years, then your best guess is that it is unlikely to be asked, and so you might need to focus on other topics. So the bottom line here is compile and then know the trend of the questions. And so please solve as many questions as you can. The more questions you solve, not with the hope of having them necessarily repeated, the more you realize what the examiners expect from you. It also helps you know how the examiners can twist questions around the same condition. For example, maybe heart failure appeared in 2018, it was asked in a different way, and in 2021, asked in another way, so it helps you read the examiner's mind. Then the questions you solve put those voluminous topics into perspective, such that any time you are asked about heart failure, you quickly remember the 74-year-old man whose clinical case scenario you solved, or the 45-year-old or the 85-year-old whose clinical case you solved. The questions we also solve helps us tackle each of almost each of the topics in a particular sub-discipline. To use nephrology as an example, Maybe in 2012, chronic kidney disease was asked, we used that to learn. In 2014, the question that came was maybe acute kidney injury, then maybe next was diabetic ne uh, nephropathy, sorry, then renal replacement therapy. So you realize that by solving questions, it helps us tackle each of the topics we are expected to know. Let questions guide your learning, and you will see that unknowingly, you studied most of the topics. Alright, and so on this slide, we will use a question from GMDC exam 2022 to illustrate our approach. So a lab investigation of a woman was given, showing the following. Calcium was 2.8 millimoles per liter with a range of 2.2 to 2.6, which was obviously high. Sodium 137 millimoles per liter, which was normal. Potassium 3.7 millimoles per liter, which was normal by the range. The woman's LFT was normal with an albumin of 37 grams per liter. The questions that followed were What is the patient's corrected calcium level? Number two, 
outline four clinical features of this condition. Number three, state two causes of this condition. Number four, how will you manage this condition? And the last one, mention two complications of the condition. Good. And so for this question, the subspecialty here is lab medicine. Before we start looking for answers, let me ask you and please be honest with yourself. Will you routinely open up a textbook to learn about hypercalcemia? The answer is no. See, but for past questions, we will be learning what we think we should know, forgetting that for an exam, it is about what our examiners think we should know. How would you know that if you've not gone through past questions? Alright, so for question 1, corrected calcium concentration. The rule here is that for every 1 gram per liter decrease in albumin, calcium increases by 0.02 millimoles. Here you will bear with me that there is nothing to understand. This part also tests memory. That is why from the very beginning we said that the exam also tests our ability to memorize. The albumin in this patient was 37, it was within normal range and so the calcium does not increase by the rule and so for this question the answer is that the corrected calcium concentration is still 2.8 millimoles per litre. Question 2. State four clinical features of hypercalcemia. It is simple. Go to your textbook. You do not necessarily have to know the answer. After you found the answers, Google for helpful mnemonics. Now, the mnemonic for hypercalcemia in the world of medicine is bones, stones, groans, and moans. Bones for skeletal manifestations, stones for renal manifestations, then groans for neuropsychiatric manifestations, and then moans, as in abdominal moans, for gastrointestinal manifestations. And so this is a table I got online illustrating this mnemonic with the corresponding signs and symptoms. So for renal, you see we have AKI, which can manifest as decreased urine output, CKD, we have nephrolithiasis, which is also renal stones. We have nephrogenic diabetic insipidus, which will manifest as polyuria polydipsia. And so for this question, I would probably pick polyuria and polydipsia and maybe renal stones. And when it comes to skeletal, we have bone pain, fractures. So I would pick that. Gastrointestinal abdominal moons we have constipation anorexia we have abdominal pain and then for the neuropsychiatric we have confusion we have mood changes so in your free time you can go through this but ensure you know this mnemonic of head if you will question three was asking for the causes of the condition which is hypercalcemia and so here we googled for a mnemonic online and the mnemonic we found was chimpanzees so c for calcium supplementation h for hyperparathyroidism i for iatrogenic maybe by giving excessive calcium i for immobilization it's known as prolonged immobilization can increase calcium levels m for multiple myeloma milk alkali syndrome and then some medications like lithium p for parathyroid hyperplasia a for alcohol abuse n for neoplasms z for zollinger ellison syndrome e for excessive vitamin d e for excessive vitamin a and then s for sarcoidosis so you can keep this mnemonic also in head or in mind sorry but then for this question three courses can pick hyperparathyroidism multiple myeloma excessive vitamin d maybe some medications like lithium each of them is correct question four was asking for the management of the condition hypercalcemia and so it is important to realize that this patient has mild hypercalcemia which is Corrected serum calcium levels less than 3. And so if the patient has absent or mild symptoms, usually you treat the underlying cause by stopping whatever is causing the problem 
and then you cancel to avoid factors that can worsen the hypercalcemia like to stop taking thiazide diuretics if she's on any she's supposed to mobilize because like we established prolonged immobilization can increase the calcium levels and then we avoid volume depletion by making her taking lots of water to even minimize the risk of renal stones and then if she has significant symptoms sometimes we can give oral phosphates they are calcium binders and also sometimes IV fluids like isotonic saline can be given to dilute the calcium in the blood and then there is a risk of fluid overload so sometimes loop diuretic like furosemide is given